Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover, and check out my website, ConsultingNinja.Tech. With that out of the way, let's get right to it. I want to show you guys some cool stuff that we can do with Svelte that is not available in other frameworks and is super slick. The very first thing that I want to show you guys is inside of our markup in Svelte, they have this hashtag await. And this is a way of handling promise-based rendering. Oh, it's so easy. This is super cool stuff. The documentation lays out a few examples or a few uh, ways that you can use it. Not really good examples, but like with most things in Svelte, it is very flexible. You can have a value that's rendered while the promise is pending. You can have a value that's rendered once it's fulfilled, and you can have a value that's rendered once the promise is rejected or if the promise is rejected. Now, all of those pieces are optional. Uh, that's what I'm saying, it's flexible. If you only want to show the pending value, you can do that. If you only want to show the error, you can do that. Uh, if you only want to show the resolved state, you can do that as well. I'm gonna give you guys this cool little example that I put together. So I have a async.svelte file and inside of here, I have an async function that just resolves to a rejection after three seconds. And then uh, here is the function that runs that and then pulls the value and then returns the value. The JSX or the markup for this looks like this. I just have that hashtag await. I fire off that run example function. The rest is history. Here is the pending. Here is the resolved if it resolves to a, a value. And then here is the dot, the colon catch for when it's an error. So I have this one re resolving to a rejection and we're throwing, not throwing a new error. So let's give this a save. And then inside of the app, I've already imported this. So let's go ahead and render this and I can show you guys what this looks like. And we'll give that a save. And we can see we're waiting for server and it resolved after that few seconds and to the error. And so we get that error catch. There was a problem, error, the server is down, what? Here on rejection, we catch that error, and then we render there was a problem, and then I add the error, and the error is server is down, question mark. Pretty cool. Let's swap this out with a resolve, resolve, like that, and then we'll get rid of the error out of there. <laughs> we don't wanna be returning an error if we're resolving. And now I'll say resolved value like that. Got to make sure to have that second ending quote there. And go take a look. Waiting for server. Response from server. Resolved value. So super easy to use this in your markup. Really easy to implement. We just have that, like I said, you have the await, the function that's returning that promise. That is that promise-based asynchronous function. And then the markup you want to render while it's pending, the markup you want to render if it resolves to a value, and the colon catch error if you want to render out an error block that's rendered if the promise is rejected. Pretty cool stuff. I thought this was super slick. This would be so helpful to use in applications. I can't even begin to describe that. Hopefully you guys think that's as cool as I think it is. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I wanna show you guys is we can render out HTML with Svelte and do it super easily. Inside of this Svelte file, I have a variable called markup and then a function that is just updating that variable uh, every time someone hits the submit button on this form. The form is super simple. We have an on submit and then I'll also point out this is really helpful as well. In Svelte, you can chain together these modifiers. You know, when you're listening to DOM events, you can add these modifiers and there's a few of them available. Stop propagation is available, prevent default is available and it's a nice, easy, clean way of adding those modifiers so you don't have to do, you know, in React, you'd have to do something like on click and then you'd have an anonymous function in here like this 
and then you'd have to have a set of you know e dot e dot stop stop prop like that and then you'd have to close that one and then do your other function so I feel like this is a lot cleaner you just have the on what the event you're listening for and then the modifiers with that little pipe and then your actual what you want to do so really easy to read as well this is just a label and then we have a text area and a submit button and then to render out that HTML you just do at sign HTML and then the variable straightforward let's go into our app to render this component out so counter and close that off and then we'll go to our site and here we have our starts this markup let's put something in here let's put an h1 and I'm feeling like a burger so Bob's burgers slash h1 oh got to close it and then we hit submit and BAM there's our HTML this is pretty cool because you can use this to render out, allow users to render out their own HTML or get creative in their posts if you're doing something like a uh, chat app or something like that. Uh, I will point out that the documentation for this, for HTML, expressly points out a few things. First of all, you can't have two separate sections that don't by themselves uh, equate to standalone HTML. What do I mean by that? This example, there's a lot of quotes and stuff going on here. So let me open this up inside of this file to give you guys a better example. What they're saying there is that you can't do this. You can't do HTML and then like an opening div and then another one, HTML, you know, some user, some user content and then HTML, a closing div. You cannot do that because Everything that comes after the at sign HTML needs to be standalone. So you just can't piecemeal HTML tags. The other thing in the documentation that I want to point out is that here it's in giant red for you to read. Svelte does not sanitize expressions before injecting the HTML. If data comes from an untrusted source, you must sanitize it or you are exposing your users to a cross site scripting vulnerability. What does that mean? It means that there is no code in Svelte behind the scenes to make sure that what HTML is being rendered here is not going to be harmful. It's not going to contain some sort of cross-site scripting attack. If you are going to expose this, like in my example here that I'm giving you, uh, you, you, could, you would have to add some sort of sanitizer to remove out cross-site scripting attacks. You couldn't just leave it wide open like this. Otherwise, uh, someone could come in here and inject some nasty HTML and mess up your site. But it is still super helpful and super cool to me. I think it's pretty sweet. All right, we have to sanitize our HTML. We have to have it stand alone. The last thing I want to show you guys is in Svelte, you can do transition super easy. They have some uh, animations that are really easy to use in Svelte. You can import them. Here I'm using Fade and I'm importing Fade and then I'm combining it with this hashtag key. And what this uh, markup does is it, it sets that this block, everything that's in between the opening key and the closing key, when this value changes, it destroys that component, or in this case, it's just an H2, but if you can do it with your own components, it destroys one and then creates another. I've combined that with fade to show you something pretty cool. So here, let's go ahead and render that. And then we'll go take a look. And you can see that every time the clock ticks, the component fades out and then fades back in. I will point out that in order to make it really smooth like this, you can change the delays, durations, all that. There's all kinds of uh, parameters that these can take. I just want to point out that if you're using this, that what key is doing, if you recall what I just said, it's destroying one and creating another. If you're not careful in the timing on your fades and you're not setting a concrete area for this to take place in, a couple of things will happen. One, you'll end up with both elements for a very split second will be rendering at the exact same time. 
So it'll look like it moves. It'll, you know, start down here and then jostle up. And then the other thing is it'll move the other elements around your page to make room for them as it's rendering more content and less content. So make sure you have this in some sort of container with a contained size so that it renders nice and smooth. All right, so there are some awesome things that we can do with Svelte. I showed you guys uh, the await. I showed you guys the uh, HTML rendering and warned you of the sanitizing. I also showed you how to add in those uh, DOM listening modifiers on your markup inside of your component where you can use the pipe and then the modifier on your DOM listener. Uh, that's pretty cool stuff. And then the transition module from Svelte is also awesome. There's a few different ones. Uh, I'll link to the docs obviously for you guys. There's more than fade. There's blur. There's a few other ones that we can use that are super cool. So I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, smash that subscribe button, smash that notification bell, and comment below with what you guys have thought of this video. It will really help the channel. And as always, you guys have a great day.